Choose your weapon. Over here, we've got an Alice 3, Harrop 2650 Supercharger, Brian Tooley Stage 4 PDS Camshaft. Over here, we've got an Alice 2, Big Single Turbo Charger, BTR Stage 4 Turbo Cam. Both of these cars are manual transmissions and yeah as close as i can get to a comparison i do understand that we've got an ls2 versus an ls3 but you know it's just a good indication just to show you guys i thought you know let's do a little video because i get a lot of people asking me what is the differences what do you prefer and so on and this would be a good one just to show people it gives you a good indication of both ends of the scale so um what i really do like about the supercharger installation it is very neat um, quite reversible and it's actually a quick job to do you know something like this we can turn these around in a week and no issues at all we're on the other scale you've got your turbocharger lots of modifications are involved to make this work like a, a massive amount of work and very very long winded to get done if you want to make it neat and so it doesn't burn to the ground because the turbochargers comes a lot of heat so you've got to make sure you get all the the heat shielding and all that stuff right but you know, there's a lot of custom fab work involved to get a really neat job and look it's worth it in the end absolutely and the big thing with turbochargers is that you can just keep winding power in and when you've got a big enough turbo something like this you know this thing can just keep feeding and feeding and you know it, it's 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 quite good to be able to just keep ramping power in where on the other token the supercharger, you kind of set your boost with your pulley um, and you kind of pretty much get what you get and you just tune around that. And you know, you, you have some fine tuning with the pulley speeds and all that sort of stuff, but it's, you, you've got certain restraints you've got to work with where if the turbocharger car, you, you've got quite fine tuning involved, you know, but you know, there's a lot of differences in the power delivery and how it works and obviously what your preferences are. So I personally, I, I am a turbo guy at heart. All my cars are turbocharged. However, because I get to drive all of these cars after tuning them and that, my honest opinion on the street, depending on where you live, the supercharger is probably more fun in the low ranges, depending on how you drive, where the, the, the turbocharger is essentially lazier, but with big legs, you know, so, you know, if you've got big wide open roads, then the turbocharger is just so much more fun because you can just get up it and it goes and it just pulls like a freight train. Um, but to say that the supercharger doesn't pull like a freight train, these pull like a freight train as well. However, these are more snappier. They've got way more power off the bottom. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to the dyno sheet now and we'll talk about well, I'll show you the actual differences between them and, it, and it's quite interesting. And, and a lot of people, you know, they don't see this part. They just look at the peak power and it's always about peak power with certain people. So here's the dyno sheet there. Um, we'll try and get an angle where you can see it. There's the power. So you've got 597 kilowatts, 1,074 uh, Newton meters for the turbocharger. And then you got 583 kilowatts, 934. Now, in the grand scheme of things, there's not a lot of difference between that if you looked at the kilowatts. Bit of difference if you looked at the torque. But the graph tells a very different story. So this green line here is the supercharger and the red line is the turbocharger. And you can see the crossover point is at about 4,500 RPM. Now we're not exactly comparing apples with apples here, but it is a general yeah, it's just, it's just a general indication to give you an indication of what the differences are. If you're trying to make a decision on, you know, what, what you actually want to do and where you want the power to be, this is probably a good way to look at it. So, um, if you had a blower car, for example, you know, which is down here, this, this green line here is the supercharger car. Say 2,400 revs, it's got, what do we got there? So we've got 517... What are we looking at? Sorry, so 517 Newton meters of torque we've got, sorry, which is right there. 517 Newton meters, sorry, I'm confusing myself. It started here, okay. So we've got 763 Newton meters for the supercharger car versus 513 for the turbocharger car. You know, and then if you come across at like 3,800 revs, you know, the, 
the supercharger car has got 874 newton meters versus 697 newton meters. So you can see that the, the supercharger is by far better off the bottom of the curve, which you can see here. So the supercharger is way stronger off the bottom, but once you hit that 4,500 revs, it's a different story. That's where the turbo kicks in. And you know you can see it carries it. And the best part about the turbocharger, you can see it sort of rolls off here, and this is us intentionally doing that with this combination. But we've got enough turbo to just keep feeding this right off the graph you know what i mean we can just keep feeding it and feeding it and that's and that's what we mean by feeding the power in with a turbocharger car with a supercharger car you actually don't get that luxury so you, you've kind of got it in if we can get the boost let's just get the boost up and we'll show you what i mean with the boost so once it loads it's time all right so you can see here with the blower car it's got all the boost in the whole way, you know, so from 2400 revs, the boost is all in and it carries it the whole way. With the turbocharger car, it ain't got much down here. It's very slow, but then once it comes on, it's on. So, you know, in hindsight, if you could get the turbo car up here earlier, um, then yeah, I guess it would be, you know, getting closer, but, you know, unless you've got a 427 Cuba, you're not going to do that. So, yeah, so quite a big difference. And this is where the turbo car has that sudden rush of torque once it starts ramping on and then it will just blow the tire off and then you've just got that big hit and you can just hold it and just keep stretching the legs out forever. So, you know, comes down to at the end of the day, what are you looking for from your car? Cause it's not all about, I want 600 kilowatts because you can have 600 kilowatts and you can see here, but you can have two very different torque figures off the bottom of the RPM. Now, if you've got a street car that you drive around, say for example, you're in say a city, for example, the turbocharger car is probably not gonna be much fun in the city because you don't really have a lot of room in that sense to be able to have some fun in the car. So where the, the supercharger car, you don't need long roads to be able to use the power because they come on power quite quickly, which makes it quite zippy and fun to drive. Where the turbo car is a little bit lazier, but you get down to some country roads and it's a very different story. You've got big roads and you can use it. Not that I'm promoting you to do that, but it's just an indication. So if you're out on the drag strip or out on a circuit track, you know, that, that's that's where you'll sort of see the differences. So I hope in this video is, gives you a bit more of an indication. Like I said, it's not apples with apples. They are not the exact same engines. They are not the exact same combination, but they are very close, close enough to give you an indication and understand the differences between why people say superchargers are better than turbochargers and why the other people say turbochargers are better than superchargers. They are not better than each other. They are both great things, good options and put a smile on your face no matter what you do. However, they both just have different power deliveries. So once you decide where you want that power delivery to be, then I guess that's where you want to go. But I will make note that, that even though people believe you can turbo a car cheaper than a blower, I can tell you right now, by the time you're finished doing a turbocharger job and doing it properly and building it, so if you're going to put like a 1500 horsepower turbo on, you need to be able to make sure everything is capable of that power level. Um, you know, it, it does end up costing a lot more than doing a blower. Even though the blower kits are dearer to buy on the initial outlay, you just pull it out of the box, you bolt it on, you put a fuel system behind it, and you're done. Where with the turbocharger side of things, there's a lot more work involved. So the initial outlay is a lot cheaper, but then it's very labor intensive and there's a lot of extra parts and additional stuff that does need to get done. And it is a lot more harder to do the reversal of the kit as opposed to the supercharger. It's very easy to do the reversal. So two very different ends of the scale. So my recommendation is, depending on what you're going to do, you need to speak to the workshop who's doing the work. You need to get an honest, unbiased opinion, and you need to explain to the people what it is your intentions are. And from that, you can make the decision. So I like to sit down with my customers. I like to talk to them about what's right, what's wrong, you know, what you want to do. So, you know, where this supercharger car here, it's staying on 98 octane fuel. I don't see the purpose in putting this car on E85. And I actually don't think it's going to make a hell of a lot more power if it was on E85. Um, you know, like it will make more power, but it's still a standard engine. So we can't push the friendship. So why go E85 when we can't go much past where we are anyway? We're on this token, this one's on E85. This does have a built engine in it, but it's of unknown nature. So hence the reason why we didn't go landing on this anymore. So, you know, once again, it comes down to combination, what you're going to use it for. Your budget is always the biggest limiting factor. How much have you actually got to spend? How much can you afford to spend? 
and you know what fuels do you have available to you and roads and all that sort of stuff so but anyway guys sit down have a talk to the people who are building your car and yeah really talk out your build plan and don't just rush into it because your mate says this is better or that's better you need to make your decision up for what you want to do um but yeah i thought this would be a good video just to, to put out there just to show the people the differences between them and yeah i hope i've done a good job at it so but anyway guys thanks for watching appreciate your time Pl please subscribe you know give us those subscribers we, we want to see more of them so but um like always have a good day and we will see you on the next one bye